Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money. Today, Thursday, uh, I didn't uh, record any videos for the last two days. I've been really, really busy. One of them was editing uh, Ugly Old Goats interview, which is already online on YouTube, and I hope you really, really enjoyed it. Uh, yesterday, I was upgrading the studio again. I bought a new uh, audio mixing table, so I was fine-tuning everything and I'm now using it to record this video, so I hope the audio is good. If any problems, uh, if you detect any problems with my audio, please use the comments below and tell me immediately what you think. If everything is fine, of course, uh, you can comment on the content, of course. But today, Thursday, Bitcoin has been going down again after a recovery yesterday. But let's go uh, directly to the screen share and you will be able to see that. Okay, so price to time model. Let me zoom in again for those of you using the iPhone or the Android phone. Uh, so here we are, we continue to accumulate. This is frustrating, completely frustrating. So we have been going up yesterday after this big crash, then we crashed again today and we are exactly at the same levels as before, as yesterday before the rise of the price action. Uh, so this week continues to be a red week again. We don't have a green week for two weeks already and the 20 week SMA is coming down in a fury. Uh, so let's see what's what's going to happen here, but we continue to be delayed regarding the 2017 cycle, which is the yellow candle pattern, as you guys know already. So uh, we continue to accumulate um, and there's absolutely nothing we can do except waiting. You guys remember my previous video, my previous recorded video, uh, I said this is a psychological move, you have to be really patient and we have to continue to be patient right now because there is nothing we can do. So price to time model continues to be delayed regarding the comparing to the 2017 cycle and just accumulating in the meantime the 20 period SMA, the green line there comes down and is coming down and uh, probably will meet the price action soon in a few weeks the RSI levels. We were not able to surpass the 2013 mid-cycle top. Uh, sorry, the 75% correction level of the RSI after the mid-cycle top in 2013. We continue to go down on the RSI, so um, it doesn't look good, as you guys know already, but we are still holding the critical levels of the $31,000, uh, so let's see how that evolves. I'm just going to change now to crypto total. So the crypto total is now below the green line. So this is the area to accumulate or to get into the market again. You guys know that already, but the support now is much lower than it was before. So we have this gap. We have this gap here, this distance from here to here, which uh, is pretty much what we could drop if there is another crash on Bitcoin and the altcoins at the same time, because as you guys know, this is the crypto total chart. So all coins combined together. Uh, and we are after this low here that was supported by the context. Uh, the support context supported this big, big crash in the market. We went up, but we are now again making this curve, which is in fact a bearish pattern. And um, it's very, very, it, it, it's becoming to be very probable that we are going to have a new crash again. It just remains to be known if this trend channel will hold the price or we will go down to the context, which would be a big disaster. So the support context is now in between the 1.06 trillion and the 900 million, uh, billion, sorry. 900 billion and 1.06 trillion is our support context. If we go there, this means that Bitcoin will crash again and all the other altcoins will crash even more because as you guys know, the volatility in altcoins is bigger. So it means that when Bitcoin goes down, Altcoins go faster, and when Bitcoin goes up, altcoins also tend to go faster. Not so fast as going down, but also a bit faster than Bitcoin. 
So the crypto total is not looking good. Again, we have the trend channel uh, here above the support context, uh, but in the case of a big, big crash in the market, uh, and I think this could be related also to a crash on the SMP, but we will discuss it in some other uh, time, not today. This could be related, so in, in the event of a big crash, I don't know if the trend channel will hold exactly at the same levels as before. This is where we are now at the trend channel. Or if we are going to really test the support context again and go to the 900 billion, which would not look so nice for a bull market, of course. We are uh, experiencing a price squeeze, uh, so the, the pro momentum tells me that we are now entering in a price squeeze, which means that the supports are really being pressed by the bears, and the bulls are also being very strong, trying to defend the hill around that level. So this is now squeezing the bulls and the bears fighting for this level, and we know that the only thing we know is that when a price squeeze happens a big volatile move is coming so let's see to which side this will go if to the bear side and going down or to the bull side and going up but we will have to wait there and wait to see so that's it for the crypto total let's check the dominance dominance continues to go up uh, it has been already for two, uh, two weeks going up, so the previous week closed as a green week, as you guys can see here, and now we are having another green week. Uh, so the, the Bitcoin dominance continues to be overall positive. We had two red weeks here in the middle of this recovery, but all the rest has been green weeks. So we are slowly but steadily going up in Bitcoin dominance, which means that altcoins continue to go down uh faster than bitcoin as i said before and the bitcoin dominance is now at 46.17 percent so uh and the indications are that we are absolutely at the minimum now at the pro momentum here we are absolutely oversold territory here for the dominance and it's very very probable that we will have to go up in dominance very very soon so let's see how that will evolve. You guys know already that there is a bull sign here. There's the blue triangle. Bull sign when this candle immediately recovered to the upside after this second big crash. And now we are holding the levels around 46. So that's it for the Bitcoin dominance. Let's check the price action. Uh, it doesn't look good, guys. This is the four hour chart. I'm going to check the monthly. So the monthly is now, the body of the monthly is now bigger than the previous body. And this is invalidating, uh, let me just turn off those plottings over there. So this is what we had, you guys remember of course from my previous videos, I said this could be uh, actually forming a kind of a round bottom here, but for that to happen, every candle should have a smaller body than the previous one. So this one is smaller than that one, but this one was really smaller than that one too. But now this monthly candle is going down and we continue. Actually, I, while I'm recording this video, I can see the, the candle it continues to go down. So it's really frustrating what's happening. No one wants Bitcoin to go to these levels, but that's what's happening in reality. So this month now has a bigger body than the previous one. The previous one was a very volatile month, as you guys can see here, by these weeks to the upside and to the downside of the body. And now we are having a full body in this candle being bigger than that one. So I, uh, it, this could be invalidating what I said before, that if we continue to have smaller body candles going around this way here, we could uh, be close to see a reversal of the price action to the upside. But now I'm not so confident anymore about that because this body is much bigger than that one, unless before the end of July, we can recover all this and have a doji here, even possibly a green doji, but I really doubt it with this um, movement to the downside now. I really doubt it that we will have it in just two or three weeks. So let's see what happens if we at least can recover and make this a doji candle. Um, that would be nice because it continues to validate the rounded bottom here in the monthly chart. But that's it for the monthly. Let's check the weekly. The weekly looks ugly, 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 
as shit. This looks complete shit here. We are now being supported by the last. This is the last support I can see is the 50 period SMA, which is the yellow moving average. So you guys see now that the yellow moving average is now just supporting this candle on the weekly. We have a sell signal. We have a body really bigger than all the weeks before, except for these two, the red ones, the big ones. Uh, also, that's this green one. But all these one, two, three, four, five weeks uh, left behind from, from these candles, this is uh, below those levels already. So we are now really, really fighting to defend this heel here, and it's not being easy. Um, I guess the price action will be continued. Uh, will The bears will continue to force the price action down here. And the last hope we have is, of course, the 50 period SMA, because then after that, guys, it's the 20K level with the 100 period and the previous all time high of Bitcoin 2017. So I don't see a lot of support in this area here. You guys can see that there is not support in this area. There is nothing here, no accumulation. Uh, it's completely empty, as you guys can see also in the VPVR on your right side of the screen. This is completely empty. Uh, so I, I don't know what's going to happen if we lose this hill, if we lose this support around the 31K, uh, probably we will be in like price discovery, but the opposite. So going down instead of going up, no one knows what could really happen. No one knows where support will be found. Uh, probably there is some support around the 20, 24, 24,000. Uh, there is a little, uh, this little bump in the VPVR. And then the next support is, of course, the all time high of 2017 and the 20K. So, guys, this doesn't look good. The, the weekly chart right now looks like shit. I don't like it. Um, the RSI continues to point down and it's now going steeper. Uh, the MACD continues to show bear momentum losing strength, but there's no point saying that because you see the price action there. So the MACD is a bit laggy. And of course, if we break this level, we will have again red, uh, dark red bars on the MACD, and this will continue to be bearish. So uh, the weekly chart is not what we want to see at all. Let's go to the daily and take a look. So the daily is now testing the critical levels. As you guys see here, we had the critical level here. We had the critical level there, here again, and two more times here and here. So we tested this level already three, four, five. And now it's the sixth time we are testing the 31,000. And you guys know already, every time you test a support level, it becomes weaker because a lot of people uh, you know, change their minds and start to sell because they see that the price action is really wanting to go to the downside. So they don't want to lose their money or they don't want to devaluate the positions they have. So that's why uh, it becomes weaker. And this is now the sixth time that we are testing the 31K level. So I don't see this as a very good one. Also, the higher highs, the sorry, the higher lows that we were having are now all invalidated. So we are now exactly at the same level as the previous lows. Uh, probably we will have a drop again like this one. I bet we will have a drop like this one here and then recovery to the upside again to continue testing the 31K. So let's see what happens there. But it, this is not famous. This is not, this is not looking good. So uh, let's see. The RSI on the daily is now again going down. The MACD is now turning bearish and we were bullish really by a hair on the daily chart. But now the blue line is below the orange and we are now starting again red bars. So the MACD turned bearish today. Unless something really, really good happens soon, guys, I'm not seeing this, um, this possibly recovering in the short term. So hold on to your positions. Patience is the key word right now. Don't get into the market. Don't get out of the market if you have some losing positions, but overall you are still okay. And if you bought at 50 or 60K, tough. There's nothing you can do unless you want to lose half of your money. 
you should just keep your positions in my opinion i would keep my positions if i was buying at 60 or 50 uh, and wait for better days and be really patient because this will take some time to get there this is not financial advice of course but in my opinion every time you sell a losing position you confirm that you lost the devaluation of that position so unless you sell it you still did not lose anything so selling is confirming the loss uh, so if i was the guy that bought at 60k i was i would not sell it now i would continue to dollar cost average going down and then when bitcoin goes up again and recovers all this territory uh, to the previous all-time high of course my position would not be so devaluated and i could then uh, evaluate what i would do with that position so that's it guys um let me check so we are close to having to end the video let's see here uh the daily is now really really close on the pro indicators framework we are really really close to the bottom of the ranging channel this huge ranging channel which represents the bull market so um we have the parallel line on top where we touch this ranging channel twice then we have this uh, two points here when the bull market started to go exponential and the first touch of the ranging channel after that big drop over there that you guys remember uh, of course traumatic day but now we are again very 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 close to the bottom of the ranging channel and very very close to the support context so we have the 50 period SMA helping to defend the hill we have the support context on the daily helping to defend the hill and we have the bottom of the ranging context so we have three things now trying to help to contain this price action going to the downside let's see who wins the fight uh, just a quick uh, overlook here a quick outlook sorry a, uh, on the dollar so the dollar is again above the trend line <sighs> what can we do dollar is very very stubborn uh <laughs> it doesn't want to die but i guess soon we will see some kind of move to the downside again because uh also the resistances above the trend line are keeping the dollar from going up you guys see the big weeks over there so this means that the bears are really really strong uh every time the bulls try to send the dollar up of course the bears send it down and leave those big weeks behind so this means that the resistance is very 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 strong so i guess we will see some ranging here on the dollar until we go again to the downside let's see how this evolves uh, then we have gold gold has been going up really really slowly but steadily so i guess some people are taking um you know taking cover in gold uh they are just away from all these fights in bitcoin and the markets and all that and gold is of course uh providing a good cover for people not to devaluate any positions in anything and to fight the uh, hyperinflation of the dollar which is coming um we if i'm not mistaken yesterday the dollar achieved the the highs um the inf inflation highs of 91 which was really really high and we achieved that again yesterday if i'm not mistaken or, or today this morning i saw a video from someone somewhere saying this and uh, actually this was right so the the inflation levels of the dollar right now are just the same as 1991 which was really really high so uh let's see how the dollar evolves but i it's really funny to see the dollar going up it means all the other coins in the world are having even more inflation than the dollar that's the only reason i can think of to see the dollar going up on that chart when the inflation is so high because that's the chart that compares the dollar to other to all other coins in the world so maybe that's the reason the other coins are uh, having more inflation than the dollar so gold continues to go up as i said the trend line held the price here this looks good it looks a bullish chart in, in my opinion gold is looks bullish on the weekly much better than bitcoin which is the worst chart for bitcoin right now is the weekly but uh let's see how this goes i bet we will have some difficulties to surpass here the 50 period sma the smp continues to be squeezed be squeezed around there so 
uh, I see this as a very, very volatile move coming on the S&P, and this might affect Bitcoin, by the way, if the S&P crashes like crazy. This could affect Bitcoin negatively, so let's see how this evolves. But for now, the S&P looks very, 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 you know, 50-50 going up, going down, but a very volatile move might be coming. Uh, I don't know if we will continue to be to see the markets, the stock market going up like crazy like before. And this one, this candle might have been the first signal that something might happen uh, in the short term to S&P, to the S&P. So uh, that's the S&P for you guys. Now, I just want to show you here the short time frame, uh, the shorter time frame for Bitcoin. This is a, f a one hour chart. But um, this is what I've been trying to check in the last uh, two days. And we have here um, a, a down wedge, so a, a pointing down wedge. Um, and this is, of course, a bullish formation, a bullish pattern. But Bitcoin has not been able to touch the top part of this wedge. So and we are now coming back down again. Uh, I will I will continue to see this situation here on the hourly chart, but uh, just to try to check if in the short term we have we might have some signals that we might uh, reverse the price action to the upside here and go again to retest the top of the wedge. But with the price action we are seeing today, I don't know if this is going to happen soon. Might happen tomorrow, for example. But I will continue to look closely at this situation. This is, of course, a bullish pattern, but we continue to uh, try to force the downside of this wedge. So let's see what happens here. So, guys, that's what I had for you guys today. Uh, stopping screen share. I hope you really enjoyed the um, interview I published with Ugly Old Goat. This is something I plan to continue doing now. Um, interviewing relevant people in the market, uh, in these markets, crypto, financial, everything financial is, of course, the main topic uh, for discussion. Uh, Ugly Old Goat was a great guy to interview. He is a very, very joyful person and very knowledgeable, also very knowledgeable person. And he has a lot of experience since the, you know, since the 60s and 70s in finance. So he has been through a lot. He knows a lot about this. If you haven't seen the interview, I really uh, invite you and advise, um, advise you to go there on my channel and look for the interview because it's excellent. It's very, very good. Um, also, uh, guys, this is the uh, first time I'm using the table. So just to, again, say if you notice anything bad with the audio, just comment below and I will read your comments, of course, as usual and answer and reply to all of them. So uh, just before, uh, let me also s say something here. I will put on the screen now the Telegram group. So this is our Telegram group. If you'd like to join the Telegram group and talk to all the people there and, and myself also, you can debate your ideas, you can ask your questions. And I am there, of course, uh, several times a day, not 24 hours a day because I still have to sleep and record some videos. But I will be there many, many times a day and will answer any relevant questions, of course. So if you want to participate, just join by using the link you see on the screen. Also, if you enjoy this content, gently touch the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. Don't forget the notification bell uh, icon and select all if you want to be notified of uh, every time I upload a video or start a live stream. So guys, I will leave you now with the wise words uh, of Sarge Esterhaus and... All right, let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. That's it, guys. Let's roll and be really careful out there in the markets. I will see you again tomorrow in the next video. Bye-bye.